Hey guys, I'm Annie G Designs and today I'm going to show you the process that I went through to take this piece of historical fantasy artwork and turn it into a real life shirtwaist for my upcoming Candy Tea cosplay. All right, so to get started on this dress or this two-piece dress, I guess, because it's actually gonna be a skirt and a top, it is going to be essentially a very shortened walking skirt and a shirt waist. But to get started on that, I'm going to need to make the patterns. I luckily have my own self-made blocks. I've used this before on this channel as well. This is what I use to make my uh, Rico cosplay. What I'm doing is it's gonna be essentially quite simple on this one. I'm gonna close off these darts and just get rid of them completely. And then I'm going to put some pleats or tucks in instead. I haven't decided 100% quite yet, but shirtwaists are not, they're fitted, but like they're not super fitted, if that makes sense. They don't have all the fitting lines that you'd normally see on a bodice. Like this actually where I'm wearing right now even has a dart on the side. This doesn't have that kind of stuff. Very loose because they had that very loose blousey shape. A shirtwaist is the start of the blouse that we're more familiar with now. So there isn't too much there, but what there will be is a lot up here because there's gonna be pin tucks and such. And the sleeves are also going to be very interesting because they're big and voluminous down here and fit a little bit more fitted down here. But we're going to start on the shirt waist or at least try to get it, get it going a little bit here. Um, I'm very excited for this part of the project because the dress is definitely one of the bigger parts of the entire uh, costume, of course. So let's uh, get into the patterns. So I've decided this time around, I'm gonna show a little bit more of the pattern making process because a few of you were more curious about it last time. The piece you see me tracing out was made by me from scratch and is to my measurements. It's not perfect, but I do adjust it every once in a while. And the first thing I had to do on this particular pattern was get rid of this giant shoulder dart because it was not necessary for this design at all. So you can see that I'm folding it out and then I'm going to retrace the shoulder and also the armhole so that it matches perfectly and adjusts for the changes I've made by folding it out. I use a combination of two French curves in order to actually get the armhole back to the shape it used to be in. Now let's actually talk about the design elements on this costume and specifically the yoke, because the yoke on this particular design is pretty special. The first thing I do is actually move the shoulder back, which you can see I've already done. And then I start to mark where I want my yoke to go along the shoulder and along the chest, which is right about the armhole area. These lines act as guidelines that I use later on to curve out the area. I have the artwork in front of me and I'm kind of trying to match the curve that you see in the artwork, just gently by hand. And then I go back in with my French curves to match it so I have a nice, clean, efficient line essentially. Now this yoke has detail in the form of buttons, so here are the buttons that I end up using and I'm measuring them so that I know that they fit on the final piece. I also have my lace trims nearby so I can measure them and just mark out where all the details are going to go because this particular yoke has a lot of detail on it. I actually use the artwork on hand to actually measure out and see how many different pin tucks I'm going to need and how many areas and where the lace trims are all going to land in the final thing. This piece is simply a guideline piece that I will later cut out and recopy so I can get all those pin tucks in because the pin tucks require more fabric. So then I just copied out the piece that acted as my guideline and I started to trace it out stopping where the pin tucks would start. Now for those unfamiliar with pin tucks, they're essentially like pleats that are actually tucked and sewn down. So I need to put extra volume in there to have the fabric that actually lays down and pleats. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm tracing out a little bit of the piece up to a certain guideline, adding in more volume to the piece and then continuing and repeating. I did end up doing this piece a few times just to make sure I got it perfectly because this area is right along the top of the costume and in the frame of my face kind of idea. So it's one of the first areas anyone's going to see when they see me in this costume. So I wanted it to be perfect. Or I mean, as humanly perfect as I could possibly get it. 
I'm also a very visual person when it comes to pattern drafting, so you can actually see that I start folding out and testing to see if the piece is working out, and luckily it was, so I was feeling really good about this pattern piece at this point. And once I knew my pin tucks worked, I was able to trace out the rest of this piece. Now, I don't go into much detail about the other pieces of this pattern, but I did want to show you a lot of this yoke because it is definitely probably the most interesting looking piece of the entire pattern for this entire costume. It's a very unique piece and a very interesting one. So I was going to knock up the whole thing, but I'm actually going to stop there. I need more room at the hips. I need more room on the front but this area worked out nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go rework that pattern completely, especially on the front. Then I'm gonna remock it up without all this stuff up here because I know this works. King, stop trying to get in the closet, you silly boy. Get, get, get. thank you. It half worked, so that's great. <laughs> I'm gonna go make my pattern modifications and we're gonna go from there. All right, so I have tried it on and I did notice a few issues, but this is mock-up number two. It's a lot better. This area is not gathered down just because I was just testing out some uh, gathering, but the shape overall is way, let go please. It is way, way better to the uh, garment I am attempting to make here. I did notice some fit issues. So you'll notice that this is pulling forward a little bit. This needs to be more rounded for this to work out. So my bad, when I lower down this neckline, I made it a little too pointy and it's creating this little issue here. So I need to round that out. I was also experiencing the dreaded arm pull gaping, which is a really annoying problem. And there's two ways to fix it. And I'll probably do a little bit of the both. So. I need to take like a little wedge out of the shoulder and I need to take a little bit out of here, possibly all the way across. I actually might have too much space in this upper chest area. But besides that, it's looking pretty good. You can see that I did not do like the full on mock-up because I knew this area worked out. So I don't need to completely alter this over here or anything. And honestly, I don't think I actually need to make a completely new mock-up after I alter my patterns. I'm going to take this apart, remove what needs to be removed, um, probably sew this down so I don't have to like cut into it or anything and alter here But the shape is looking good and it's now just like your basic fitting issues that I'm fixing which I'm pretty happy about This is the most annoying part of stuff because I'm also fitting it on myself on this mannequin without a partner or anything So that makes this very difficult, but I'm managing so we are in my bathroom right now because I am wearing the mock-up It's not done up 100% properly. So there is a little bit of issues with that But the big gaping problem is now gone. There is some extra fullness here still But that is mostly because this is a blouse so I have all this nice, um, all this is nice and up here, but it's here that I'm really happy with. This will never 100% match your neck because of course it is a straight line onto a curved area, but it is not like pulling forward like it was before. And the, there's not this huge like inch of gaping hole. The shoulders are back and yeah, this is looking very good. This was a good idea to take a tuck out of here and I'll just be cutting that out of the pattern basically. So there will not be a tuck line on the final garment, but I'll cut it out of the pattern and then smooth it back out again. It has turned out pretty good. So this part of the bodice is now uh, a finished pattern, which I'm very, very happy about. I'm now gonna go pin it back onto the mannequin and now I'm going to actually make the, the sleeve mock-up, one sleeve mock-up to see how it works. And if it works, then it's ready to go into the final fabric. If it's not, then I just have to alter the sleeve patterns around a bit. I'm looking forward to seeing how the sleeve looks in here. There's a, there is still some extra ease in here. And like I said, there's, it's not like form, form fitting because it is blouse, but I'm excited to see how this goes into a sleeve. So the second sleeve is now in and this one is way better. It fits better. The shape is way nicer because the piece is now, I, it's rounded at the bottom. It creates this nice shape right here compared to the other one, which the only thing different about these two is the different pattern pieces and they are night and day. The difference in how they look is remarkable. And honestly with this one, I can really see like that silhouette really coming into play. That sleeve pattern is now complete. I have a few tweaks, tweaks I want to do the collar, which you can see that I pinned out over here. That was a lot of work, a lot of back and forth fitting. Fitting on yourself is very difficult, but I did it and I have a pattern that I'm really happy with. So when I'm pattern drafting, I actually do not add on any seam allowance because that would require copying the pieces again because I cut into my patterns to alter them. I'm a very visual learner, so I have to cut into them oftentimes. So I add on the seam allowance before I cut out the fabric instead. This is just so I don't waste as much paper and gives me more control of the final fabric piece as well, or at least it does in my opinion. 
You'll also notice this beautiful fabric I'm using. This is linen from a company called Pure Linen Envy, and they are a Canadian site, and I was so happy to learn about them from someone at work, and I think I'm going to be using them a lot from now on. They use a lot of natural tone fabric colors on their site, and I really fell in love with this color, which was almost an exact match to the artwork. Here you can also see that lovely little uh, weird yoke piece and how it ended up turning out. Definitely an oddly shaped piece, but it ended up working out beautifully. And this one has a little bit of a smaller seam allowance because it is such a delicate piece. So the first piece I gave any attention to is actually that weird looking little yoke piece. I had marked down where the pin tucks would go and started to pin them down so that I could have a nice accurate top stitch when I made these pin tucks over on the sewing machine. They're straight lines but it was a very careful stitching to make sure that they were nice and straight. I am currently being so picky on these pin tucks. I've taken out the front ones like twice already because they're just not parallel and I'm trying to get them parallel. They were perfect on the mock-up the first time I did it, but now that I'm actually doing the real thing, it's being picky. It's just the two center ones and I'm just, mm, gotta get them just right, but yeah, to the seam ripper. So once I fixed up all my pin tucks and was happy with them and also did the same for the back pieces, I put the shoulders together so that I could make a welt seam on this particular piece. And then I could start to add on other things later. A welt seam is basically sewing a seam normally and then folding over the seam allowances. I ended up stitching down the seam allowances by hand because I really like how that finish looks and you don't see any top stitching on the outside of the garment, which this is again right along the shoulder and right along the area that frames my face. So I want it to be nice and clean and I like hand sewing. As for laces, I'm using two different laces. This one's a vintage one that comes from my boyfriend's grandmother, and I only had a little bit of this one, so I had to be very careful with the way I pinned it on and used it. As you can see, because of the curvature of the shoulder area, I had to be very careful in manipulating the fabric around that shoulder seam, but it ended up going on quite smoothly. I stitched down both sides of this little piece. The second lace I used is also technically a vintage lace, but not quite as vintage as the other one. But this one needed to be cut down in order for it to actually be appropriate for what I needed it to do. So I cut it down to size so I could have just the right look of this nice little scallopy looking lace. Now it's not an exact match and neither is the other one to the fabric. And the other lace actually has some aging on it, which I think adds a lot of character. This also went on by being top stitched on in a very similar manner to the first one. And again, I really like how these look texture wise. They just add so much to this area of the costume and so much personality too. I also added some lace around the edge of the yoke, the same one from before because I had so much of it and there was so much of it that I could use. So I added it on the edge. Now, another very notable point of the yoke is the ruffle. So first I had to cut out the strip and then hem the edge because I couldn't hem it once it was already ruffled. So hemming first was a must. And once it was hemmed, I had to put two rows of gather stitches in and then gather that into the yoke. This was quite a lot of fabric to go into one little yoke, but it ended up going quite smoothly, I would say. Okay, maybe smoothly is not the right word. As you can see, this looks like a lot, but it ended up working quite nicely with hardly any mistakes. I'm really happy with how this area actually ended up turning out considering. All right, so this is the point that I got to yesterday and honestly like it to some people might not look like much but this is a, a ton of work and you know this is almost a days of work and I am super happy with how it looks. There's a lot of little details on this little this small piece which is essentially just the yoke of the bodice but yeah it's turning out really good and I'm really happy with it. So now I'm gonna go and change thread colors on my machine and I guess it's time to start working on like the body of the bodice and then attach it to this. We're, we're getting there, we're getting places, and I'm really excited to attach this and like start putting it all together. Yeah, that's where I'm at now, and I'm gonna go do an abundance of French seams <laughs> again. So, well, I guess I'm starting with a welt seam actually on the, uh, the shoulder. So shoulder welt seam first and then a bunch of French seams, but yeah. 
gonna go work on that now. Now I will admit I was a little nervous for this part of the yoke because conflicting curves are never very much fun. They require a lot of patience to get right, but I did end up getting it in the first try. There was also a lot of seam allowance to deal with, so I had to use my Femori Cutlery scissors that I got at the World Cosplay Summit because they were the sharpest and best options to get all of that extra bulky seam allowance out of there. Because, just like the shoulders, I was planning on putting a welt seam, which required sewing down and folding in all the seam allowances. So if I had not cut down all the excess seam allowance you saw before, this would have been such a bulky seam right on the chest, like right on the area that you would see, and you'd just see a little bump and a ridge all around this yoke, which I did not want. And with the yoke all finished, it's time to actually put some of this bodice together. So time to put in some side seams, which a nice French seam, because you know me, I love a French seam. Putting the wrong sides together, flipping it, trimming down the seam allowance, and wrong sides together for a nice enclosed seam. They are just so satisfying, and I was really glad to do a little bit more French seaming, as always. Now, time to deal with where the darts used to be on this particular bodice. Now, instead of darts, instead I'm treating them like little pleats or tucks. So I'm marking where the dart edges usually would have been, and then I fold them and enclose them in together in the same direction, which ends up making a nice little flat tuck in the end. This kind of bodice usually has a little bit of a flatter back, a more fitted back, while the front is a lot more blousy. So this is the best way for that flat, but still loose and blousy look. And you see it a lot in some of these historical garments. And once I was happy with my little pleated tucks, I brought it over to the sewing machine and simply top stitched them down into place so that they would stay nice and secure and not move around on me. At this point, it was also a good time to work on the hem of this garment. Now, this is not something you're going to see on the final costume because it's going to be tucked in, but I still made sure it was nice and clean. And now I'm pressing over some edges along the center back to make the back facing. Now, this is a little button placket of sorts, I guess you could call it, where I fold in two edges along some lines that I had thread marked earlier. These end up folding in and make a nice secure area that holds on to the eventual, well, I didn't put buttons, but snaps. And how did I secure down these folded edges? Well, by hand, of course. I could have done this by machine with a nice top stitch, but I just really like the way slip stitching looks on the outside of the garment and on the inside. And again, I just really enjoy hand stitching. You would be surprised how fast I've actually gotten at slip stitching. I felt like this would take me an hour and I think it maybe took me 20 minutes total to do both full center backs of this. I actually went quite quickly. All right, so this is the point that I uh, let off on the other day when I was sewing, and I've got to say, I am very, very happy with the results so far. This is how the back is looking. I love the face. I love that you can actually kind of see it and see a little bit of the stitching, but it's still like invisible and stuff. I am just overall very happy with how this is turned out. Now, the next thing that I'm going to work on is actually the collar. The collar is actually cut a little interestingly that it's a bit bigger than the actual size of the neckline right now, because of course there's all that overlap and flap and stuff. So. I'm going to be basically pinning it onto the mannequin, um, pinning it and lining it up with the current neckline that is there with all the overlaps and such all figured out, and then I'm gonna cut them down. But before I can even start attaching it to here, I actually need to put some lace in the collar as well so that it matches areas over here and matches, of course, the art. So basically going to um, trim down the collar and then um, add in all the lace, and then we'll consider putting it onto the neckline. So with the collar all made, it was time to actually attach it to the neckline. And this went on with a nice little stitch, and then I would end up folding it up and in, and of course, once again, hand slip stitching down the inside of the neckline. Again, that's because I wanted to avoid top stitching on the bottom of the neckline, and I also didn't want to do some stitching in the ditch in case it wasn't the most accurate stitching ever. A slip stitch is just a nice way to ensure a clean look on both the inside and outside, and I just really love it. And now this step wasn't necessary and I felt like I wanted some top stitch along the edge. And again, this is right around the area around my face. So I decided to do the top stitching by hand because I just really enjoy hand top stitching. And the final look ended up looking really satisfying. I really love this.
So I've gone ahead and I have hand gathered the waist area on my mannequin so that I know exactly where all of these gathers need to sit because of course I can't just do it by eye on the flat piece because it's not a body. So I put it on my mannequin to kind of gauge where I want these gathers to sit and how wide I need the area to be. And now I'm gonna take a piece of twill tape and essentially put it on the middle and just kind of hand stitch it down on the middle of the waist. This will keep the gathers all in place, nice and snug, and then it will have that desired Edwardian look to the front because of course a lot of the bodices were gathered in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some twill tape to the gathers that I have gone and done and then it will be nice and secure. So welcome to my floor. I'm gonna cut out the uh, the lower sleeve, the tighter sleeve of uh, this particular bodice now. I'm kind of at a stalemate though, where I would like to continue working on the sleeve, but if I wanna finish that upper sleeve, I need to wait for some ribbon to arrive in the mail. So I'm just gonna go at this quite slowly, to be completely honest, because it could arrive between anywhere from today till two weeks from now. Anyway, I'm working on the sleeve. Essentially, I have some pin tucks on this particular sleeve, and that's gonna be the first step is stitching down all those pin tucks on the machine, pressing them down, and then I could put the sleeve together. And I think I'm going to make a welt seam, a one welt or flat felled seam for the inside, just because I like the finish of it. And it keeps it nice and flat for when I attach it to that other sleeve later, so I don't have to worry about the seam allowance flipping around and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna cut out this sleeve I have right here and start working on that. This is not comfortable. So I now have my sleeves sewn to a good point and like I'm, I was just about ready to um, do the seam allowance. Sew down the seam allowance with a nice welt seam, like finish it by hand fouling it. Um, but then my pin tucks just weren't meeting up the way I wanted them to. They're just slightly off. Like slightly, slightly. And it was bothering me. So I have gone in, uh, even with my seam allowances already tucked down and stuff like that, and opened them up there. And now I'm gonna just basically ladder stitch it closed so that my pin tucks match up exactly. Cause again, it was bothering me and this is gonna be on my wrists where I am going to see it constantly. So I want them to be like perfect. So yeah, I've already trimmed down the seam allowance on one side. So this is a little nerve wracking, but um, I'm gonna go in and hand fix this now so that they line up well because I want it to be really good. <laughs> I also did hem the sleeve by hand, and then I also added on the lace trim by hand, which is the same lace from before, but cut at a different width. All right, so it's been a few days, almost like a week since I worked on my Sakizo project. And that is because I was at a standstill and I don't like working on multiple pieces at once. So I took that time to just focus on video editing, stuff like that, and get stuff right for Christmas because at the time of filming this and working on this, it's the holiday season. But the next part arrived. The thing I was waiting for arrived. 20 meters of an eighth of an inch wide ribbon. Now I took a bit of a risk with this because I didn't know if it'd be the right color. It is almost perfect. And once it's on the blue of the sleeve, it's going to look perfect. So I'm really, really glad about this and I can continue working on the sleeve. Now to talk about what I'm actually doing on the sleeve next. So first off, I need to cut out those upper puff sleeves. The reason I haven't cut those out yet when I did the rest of the sleeve or when I did the bodice was because I knew I'd probably have to wait and I don't want the linen pieces just to be sitting around and fraying. But I'm planning on working them now and they should be done in the next few days. So I'm going to cut them out now. Now once they are cut out, it's all about placing the ribbon very carefully. I might even hand baste it down in place first. I'm not sure yet, but then I will take it to my machine and sew them down. There's three rows of ribbon that needs to go on here and both sides of the ribbon need to be sewn down. I cannot just get away with just one down the middle or it will flip and flop everywhere. So yeah, that's a lot of top stitching, um, a lot of thread. Hopefully I have enough. If I don't, I can just go down to the store and get more at least. But that is where I'm at at this point, just adding on the ribbon onto the sleeve and then I can actually finish up the sleeve and put it all together. But first, time to work with some ribbon. So now with the sleeves all dealt with and the details sewn on, it was time to actually put the sleeve together. Now, because I decided to do the under sleeve or the bottom of the sleeve with a welt seam so it'd be nice and flat, I decided I wanted to do the same for the upper sleeve. I could have done a nice French seam here, which probably would have been faster, but I kind of wanted that look of a consistent line of that welt seam going all the way down the sleeve. Was it necessary? No, but I just liked the way the flat welt seam ended up looking. So I decided to go about it this way. 
So just like before, right sides together, stitching it with a normal stitch, and then going over to the iron and pressing over the edges, getting rid of some of that excess seam allowance, and folding over the edges so I could prepare to hand stitch it all down into place for that very satisfying welt seam. Or I suppose flat felled seam, depending on who you ask. Both of those terms can work, it's the, it's the same term. And you see what I mean? Look how satisfying that little seam is. It looks so nice, and again, I've gotten so fast at slip stitching, and these seams weren't even that long because the puff sleeves are not very long at all, so it didn't take me much time at all. Now let's turn these puffs into actual sleeves and attach it to the bottom sleeve. That required gathering the bottom into that small little bottom sleeve seam. So with a gather stitch and pulling it in and then attaching it to the bottom sleeve. And to do that, I actually used a French seam because again, I wanted a nice finished edge and I wanted to avoid using serging. But you can just see how much volume is going into such a small space here. They end up looking really, really cool in the end and I'm really happy with the final result of how these sleeves ended up looking. And the French seam was also very satisfying and the flat welt seams made it very easy. Just look at them, they look so good, I'm so proud of these. And of course I actually had to attach to the bodice, which again I also did with a French seam, which was ruffled in and gathered into the armhole. Again, a lot of volume going into a lot smaller space, but not quite as small as the arm from this undersleeve was before. These again were also French seamed in, a nice clean finish for a nice clean sleeve. I am so happy with how these ended up looking, and I just love how clean the inside of this garment also ended up looking as well. I'm just overall very proud of it and the work I put into it. Which is exciting, instead of using my tripod, I'm using the new uh, sewing arm right now, which is very convenient and I like it a lot. Anyway, we're not talking about uh, equipment I got for Christmas right now, but we're talking about the garment that I'm working on over here. So at this point, I am just missing buttons and accessories. And if you remember from my video about my hat, I made this, this little, little orange gem. And I made it along with the orange that's on the hat. And I need to attach it to this. Now I've gone ahead, I remember I bought some buttons that were in a brassy, coppery kind of color. Well, I realized they were not the right color so I went and spray painted them. And I spray painted this pin back at the same time. I now need to attach this little uh, gem into the pin back. Now here's the thing, a friend of mine actually pointed this out to me uh, recently when they were over. And they suggested that I actually paint the back of this silver before I attach and glue this on with a clear glue. Because right now this impacts the color a little bit. And if this is silver, the true color of my resin pour, which is a very specific color that matches my orange, won't come through. So I am going to have to paint the back and then glue it. And then I can finally attach this onto the garment and place all the buttons because I can't really place the buttons until I know exactly where this guy is going because it's going to impact some of the placement of the other buttons. I just dropped the gem and then I could get all the buttons on and the garment will be all finished. So that is super exciting and I'm feeling really good about this. So that did not work very well. This did not glue very well to the surface of this and you could just see glue bubbles and you can see that the glue pulled off some of the paint. So didn't quite work very well. So I'm gonna go in and use some tin foil and put it on the back because that has nearly the same effect. Look how nice that looks. I've seen this trick a few times, so it's gonna give me the same effect, but I won't have to paint it and hopefully it will work better with the glue. So uh, I'm gonna try this out and see how it works, but this uh, hopefully it does. So I guess third time's the try, because that also did not work. You know, I sent a message to my friend who is a glue fiend and got some more advice, and I'm going to try scuffing up this, repainting it silver, because obviously the silver has all come off. I am going to try essentially using some other resin to just cast it to the brooch. Basically using other resin, some clear resin, as glue and putting it in the little divot, because it's slightly rounded and putting it there. Hopefully third time is the charm. <laughs> Gosh, this is just a process.
here is my finished shirtwaist for Sakizo candy tea. I am ridiculously happy with the final product here. I think this is some of my best sewing and some of my best personal fitting work that I've ever done on garments that I drafted myself. I am so happy with like the smooth fit over here, the way the side seams sit, the sleeves. I'm so happy with the sleeves. I have so much range of motion. I'm overall just really happy with how this turned out. And yeah, probably one of my favorite garments I've ever sewn at this point. It was extremely enjoyable to make. And I hope you guys enjoyed following along, watching me make this piece. Now, of course, this is one of a series and I will have more content coming soon because, spoiler alert, as of filming this, the skirt's also already finished. Very soon, there will be a second video coming out about how I made the skirt for this particular costume, the matching skirt for this to make the full gown. This video, though, is coming out the day after G Anime in Gatno, where myself and Megwin Cosplay were cosplay guests. So that vlog will be coming before the vlog for the skirt, which I have tucked away over here, but it will be coming out very soon. So make sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff to see when that finally does come out. Either way, I'm super proud of this project. I'm super proud of how it's all coming together and I'm just very, very excited about it. As you can probably tell, I'm loving working with this color a lot. I just love all the different techniques I got to use and I just, I feel comfortable, I feel cute. That's everything you would want out of a cosplay like this. And overall, I'm just really happy with how this is turning out. And I guess I will see you in the next one. See you guys later. Also, one of my goals for this costume was that I'd be able to put on as much as possible without any assistance. And I can confirm, despite there being snaps down the back, I can put them all on alone, which is why I opted for those over hook and eyes. I can do this all by myself because there's no one home with me right now. So I had to do this all by myself. I'm so proud.